Today's East Minute will discuss landmark papers for laparoscopic gavage for complicated diverticulitis. Treatment of complicated diverticulitis continues to evolve, with recent data challenging the necessity of Hartman's procedure as the standard of care in the management of perforated disease, even in the setting of intra-abdominal contamination. As each operation carries its own mortality and complication risk, reducing the need for future operative intervention is of great interest, with alternatives to Hartman's procedure proposed in an effort to decrease morbidity and the rate of permanent stoma. While current literature supports a transition from Hartman's procedure to primary resection with anastomosis as definitive management of disease, one alternative has been suggested and well described in the last 30 years. Initially suggested as a means of bridging patients to elective operation in order to avoid Hartman's procedure, laparoscopic peritoneal lavage was introduced in the 1990s with initial relative promise. However, ongoing analysis and more recent multicenter study demonstrate variable, less encouraging results. Several East landmark papers have been selected to address this specific method of managing complicated diverticulitis. The first of these is the SCANDIV trial. As a randomized multicenter superiority trial, this study compared laparoscopic lavage to primary resection. Of note, these patients were randomized after laparoscopic Henchy staging to reduce the incidence of selection bias, as clinicians might deem some patients unsuitable for the study based on this evaluation. This resulted in similar numbers of feculent peritonitis patients between the study groups. While there were no statistically significant differences in severe postoperative complications, there was a trend toward overall lower complications in the resection group. However, lavage patients were significantly more likely to develop intra-abdominal infection, secondary to peritonitis and abscess formation. In particular, lavage patients without fecal peritonitis, or Hinchy 3 or less, were significantly more likely to require a second operation due to complications largely related to secondary peritonitis as opposed to wound dehiscence in the resection group. However, resection patients were more likely to have a stoma at 90 days with no appreciable difference in mortality, length of stay, or quality of life. With these poor outcomes in secondary endpoints, this study did not confirm findings from previous non-randomized controlled trials suggesting that laparoscopic peritoneal lavage was associated with better outcomes. These results are similar to the LOLA arm of the ladies trial, which was terminated early and only enrolled a small number of patients. This study reached completion, recruiting its intended sample size, and included considerably more patients, still demonstrating a greater need for reoperation in the resection group. They concluded that among patients with likely perforated diverticulitis undergoing emergency surgery, laparoscopic lavage versus primary resection did not reduce severe postoperative complications and led to worse outcomes in secondary endpoints. The same group then published long-term outcomes as a follow-up to Scandiv, focusing on Hinchy grade less than four. Not surprisingly, deep surgical site infection rates favored resection, while superficial surgical site infection favored lavage with statistical significance. Most importantly, however, while reoperation rates were similar in both groups, unplanned reoperations were more common in the laparoscopic lavage group, occurring in 27 versus 10 percent, as the vast majority of resection cases underwent scheduled ostomy reversal. Despite this, at one year, 42 percent of resection patients had an ostomy, while only 14 percent of lavage patients did. Also highlighted, the lavage group had four missed carcinomas out of seven in that total arm, that were not detected at the index case, potentially resulting in delay in cancer diagnosis and initiation of treatment. This highlights the importance of interval endoscopy in patients that are managed without colon resection. But what if we continued this follow-up beyond one year? A multicenter trial out of the Netherlands captured patient follow-up at a median of 46 months. On review, they found intra-abdominal sepsis was initially controlled in 82% of patients but 36.7% experienced disease recurrence or complications. 20% of these patients required surgery. All of those who failed initial intra-abdominal sepsis control, which were 18%, required surgery or died from diverticulitis-related causes. Overall, 71% of lavage patients had some adverse event, 32% having disease recurrence, seven of which were complicated and 10 of which were uncomplicated, with 32% requiring subsequent surgery. Over half of these were emergent operations. Most importantly, however, 11% of patients died of diverticulitis-related complications. In conclusion, 
Even in patients initially managed successfully, complications and subsequent surgery frequently occurred with no guarantee of favorable outcomes. Most recently, another multicenter observational study looked at a comparison of laparoscopic interventions alone, comparing laparoscopic sigmoidectomy with laparoscopic lavage. They focused on patients with modified Hinchy grade 2 disease not responding to conservative therapy or Hinchy grade 3 disease. This study represents what is likely done in practice, only including those who are not candidates for non-operative conservative therapy, in an effort to combat the absence of strict inclusion criteria present in prior study. There was a significant increase in post-operative intra-abdominal sepsis in the lavage group, as demonstrated in prior studies as well, again confirming the potential inadequacy of this intervention in source control. Overall morbidity was lower in the resection group, although some did fail attempts at laparoscopic intervention, requiring conversion to open resection. Most importantly, nearly one-fifth of patients who underwent laparoscopic lavage required reoperation during their index hospitalization. This is a staggering number, especially when compared to early data suggesting efficacy and prevention of need for repeat operation in the resection group. Surprisingly, postoperative length of stay was actually longer in the lavage group, likely related to associated complications and need for repeat intervention. Additionally, with questionable source control, physicians may be likely to monitor patients for a longer period. Regarding late postoperative results, six of the 22 laparoscopic lavage patients who initially recovered presented with at least one episode of recurrent diverticulitis, highlighting a risk of recurrence, especially when compared to no disease recurrence or need for additional intervention in the resection group. This occurred on average five and a quarter months after primary surgery and required sigmoidectomy in 67% of those who recurred. Important to highlight, however, many in the resection group did have an ostomy for discussion of reversal, which was not included in the rate of repeat intervention. With 37% left with an encolostomy and 21% of the primary anastomosis patients left with a protective loop ileostomy, takedown risk cannot be completely neglected if so desired by the patient. Based on the high rate of disease recurrence and ultimate need for sigmoidectomy, however, this risk is shared with most in the lavage group, highlighting the potential inadequacies of the intervention regarding patient safety and avoidance of colostomy morbidity as originally intended. In conclusion, the higher reoperation rates, more frequent postoperative ongoing sepsis, and higher recurrence rates, the authors felt that laparoscopic sigmoidectomy is safer and more effective procedure that permits adequate control of source infection in the hands of experienced surgeons. While there have been many systematic reviews and meta-analyses focusing on lap lavage and acute perforated diverticulitis, the results and conclusions have been quite variable, likely due to variability of the studies considered, types of analyses performed, and the lack of specificity in the description of the evaluated outcomes. Many suggest lap lavage to be a safe and effective approach to treatment of Hinchy grade 3 diverticulitis. However, a substantial drawback of the procedure is the risk of the patient developing an intra-abdominal abscess or uncontrolled infection that may lead to ongoing intra-abdominal sepsis, ultimately requiring emergent intervention and delaying initial sigmoidectomy. The studies that conclude that lap lavage is not safe highlight this rate of high reoperations the not insignificant risk of missing sigmoid carcinoma, and the comparable 30-day mortality.